Greetings programs and welcome to a real blast from the past. This is the original Crusader Kings and the reason why I have reinstalled this, well in the last video there was basically an abortive reference to something that was in the original Crusader Kings and I was trying to look it up on Google and I couldn't find it so eventually I just gave up, dug out my disc, installed the game and then it turned out the whole thing was a red herring anyway. But it made me wonder it's been so long since I've played this. This is my very first Paradox game, my very first Grand Strategy game. I'm, I'm just wondering, will the nostalgia hold up? So my plan is to play for sort of 20, 30 minutes maybe, and see if I can stand this horrendously small, as it seems to me now, screen resolution. I'm recording this on, uh, well, the, uh, the, the height is 720, but it is 4x3, because this is the max resolution that the game will go to. So, although... The monitor resolution is actually, uh, what, what would it be, 1024 by 768 God, how did we ever play it? How did we ever play it 800 by 600 for crying out loud, and 640 by 480 and oh my word. But, yeah, it's slightly smaller than it is on my screen, but even so, not that much smaller. So, we're going to try single player. And I'm going to see if I can remember anything about this game, because, it, like I said, it's been a very very long time so it much like the CK2 uh, kind of presets it gives you a list of for each of the the, the periods it gives you uh, suggestions about what might be an interesting place to play so naturally we're gonna go with Scotland I mean you don't have to we can you basically I don't know if there's mouse acceleration or something going on here but if, if the mouse uh, movements seem a bit erratic it's because it's very erratic to control but basically you can uh, sort through the list of all the counts the dukes or the kings and actually having said that's the list of suggested no that's just the list of available kings so I retract the previous comment see that's how long it's been since I've played this so you can start as uh, really any Christian character and there were actually I think attempts to mod it so that you could play as uh, uh, Muslim characters but it was hard coded into the game that you couldn't, basically. And this game was, I mean, when it came out, it was uh, pretty buggy. In theory, it's got a multiplayer. It doesn't really work, though. They, I think it was like a couple of people worked on this. It was a fairly small team effort to get this game going. And... I think the original developer, I can't remember the exact story, but they stopped working on it before it was fully finished and it was released in something of a, a buggy state and you might have noticed at the top right hand corner of the screen it said patch 2.1 beta and that was the very latest patch for the uh, the Deus Vult expansion pack that was uh, released. So this is it, this just seems horrendously cramped and tiny to me. So we've got our message pop-ups. The actual uh, Demence screen is uh, rather different, as you can see. You only had a single holding. Uh, oh, Duke of Wales wants to form an alliance. Oh, for goodness sake, I'm being too slow here, apparently. Uh, a marriage, why not? Um, right, so yeah, this is your holding. You build stuff in the holding. It's not subdivided. I remember reading the development diaries of CK2, and I was trying to understand what well, the provinces are going to have multiple holdings. How on earth is that going to work? And as it turned out, it worked really well, but you can see why it was confusing to us, to those that had uh, grown up playing CK2. So yeah, you can improve various things about your holding as your technology increases, but technology spread in this game was uh, pretty weird. Also, I think this... Oh, there we go. I can't use our scroll wheels. I was thinking, oh, I can't scroll in and out. No, I have to use the arrow keys because this game came out in... I don't even know when. I'll have to look that up. Oh, clicked on the minimap there. So this is the extent of the minimap. The Mongols, when they invade, invade sort of up here, and oh boy, that's always fun. I, some of my most epic memories in this game are of repelling Mongol invasions because they were just, they were tough. So it looks largely familiar to anyone that's played CK2, and in fact, when CK2 came out, this was pretty much the extent of the map, although there was more up in the, the top and the east here, but it has, of course, considerably expanded over into uh, sort of Asia Minor and the Indian subcontinent. So, yeah, there is a, a lot there. So this game, 
I don't even know where to start. I think we're just going to try playing and, and see what happens. And I guess I'm going to have to do everything with the mouse because... <laughs> uh, okay. This is... Uh, my son? I'm not sure. I should probably look at my character. So I am Malcolm Dunkeld. And... I... I've forgotten how you look up your own dynasty now. I don't think you could very easily, to be honest. Now, I can get married or somebody that can get married. I'm so used to... They improved so much for Crusader Kings 2. It is absolutely unreal. Right, so we need two positions to be filled. Okay, let's try do that first. Can I remember how on earth I actually... Uh... Uh, oh, also, you could, you could, on a per province basis, you could change taxation. That that was changed, and that's probably a good thing because that was so micromanaging. Uh, religion map, realm map. Do I want? Uh, uh, that's Scotland. Wow, this is so. This is so clunky. How did I ever play this? My word, right? Um. Oh, I remember. Was it that? Yes, it's that. You click on that. Okay. Access the court screen. Bingo. There we go. It's coming back to me. Appoint a marshal. He's pretty terrible, but he's the only one. And we don't have anyone we can appoint as a bishop. Okay. So, I... Am I married? I have a spouse. Who is... Uh, a Norwegian Catholic. Okay. I have... Uh, who's my heir? Successor. It's going to be Duncan Dunkeld. Okay. So, what was the other message? Uh... Donald is an adult from our dynasty who can get married. So, um... I really don't know. Where am I looking? Who is Donald? I remember it being so difficult to find people in this game. To find specific characters. Now, there is... Oh, let's see if I can remember. There's the, there we go. That's the score screen. I'm just trying out the different function keys at the moment because there was one of them uh, aha, characters, that's the one we want. So I can look at characters in my court. So there we go. Now, you could look up a list of characters. Can you access that character screen from this list? No. <laughs> my word, we have come on a long way. I mean, I remember reading about this game, and it's basically... Um, it, it, it's a graphical front end for a database, and... Really, Crusader Kings 2 is as well, but it's a, a lot more sophisticated in a lot of ways than this particular uh, game. So, Spy Master Margaret. Okay, well, I think we just lost a Spy Master, actually. I probably shouldn't have done that. Um, well, we have other people we can uh, appoint, so that's fine. But, uh, yeah, I I was so into this game. I, I think I was introduced to it by a friend, and I was just like, oh my god, this is so different than anything I've ever played, and it was. The uh, first of the Europa Universalis series I played was EU3, and I've talked about EU3 in the past, and how I discovered the MEIOU mod, and oh, I hope the Skype pop-up hasn't just... Uh... You know, it's funny, that person there, if the Skype pop-up has recorded on the screen, that is exactly the person who introduced me to Crusader Kings. And apparently I'm just not paying attention and marrying off all my spy masters, I better stop doing that. Um, okay, the next marriage offer that comes up, we'll just ignore. So, Donald. We're trying to find Donald. Um, is it this Donald? Donald Dunkeld? Okay. This is our mission now. We've got to somehow get Donald Dunkeld married. And I think, if I remember the way to do it... Now, there was another search function. Uh, where were we? F6. And there was like um, an eligible bride finder. And it was one of these. Here we go. Potential brides. Now this just tells you what court they're in. It does tell you their stat. But as with the character thing, there is no way of directly linking. You have to go and find them in the court. You have to go and ask their relevant ruler. So we want somebody with... Oh, I don't even know. Let's just sort by age and see who... Uh, there's no betrothals in this game, by the way. It was marriages from the age of 16 only. Um, so, I, I mean, the traits system, that's all very familiar, um, the stat, there's a lot of stuff that, when CK2 came out, they 
they took care to preserve from the original because it works really well in the original and they expanded upon it and they made the interactions a bit deeper and more complicated but uh, yeah let's see right this person's not terrible this is Elizabeth Va Von Geraldsek in the Duchy of Upper Lorraine so now your mission should you choose to accept it is to find the Duchy of Upper Lorraine so we're gonna try and do that uh, was there a search function I honestly can't remember I think there might have been ah ha now that, that's just a province that's not a title but we'll uh, if I can spell we'll try Lorraine and there it is in the midst of all those others so this is how you interact with other characters in this game and we want to offer a marriage of Donald Dunkeld and it was uh, it was Ursula wasn't it uh, we can just mouse over and see the stats actually yes it would have been so we want to offer a marriage there's none of the the you know you can't see the chances of acceptance or whatever for any offer you make at least to my memory it's all just shots in the dark and so sometimes you end up would preemptively bribe people oh the good old thieves guild that was always annoying because you, you lose tax from whatever province that happens in in fact i think you could actually uh let's see it was strathclyde yeah, it actually pops up on your province map okay there we go successfully we have married somebody i i'll have a look at my vassals and uh, we've got two du uh yes two dukes one of whom is my kin you can see there uh who is uh my brother in fact so yes now how do i see our relationship there we go loyal so that's uh that's fine he's gonna be fine and it's basically, if you want to find out through a character, you have to do it through the top level liege screen. And you have to click through until you find them. <laughs> so this is Maldred of Athol, who is also very loyal. I think everybody's just very loyal. Let's check our rivals down in England. Well, we'll actually... Uh, relational map? Economic map? Uh, that one, realm map. So as you can see, it actually looks fairly similar to... Uh, the the starting situation in 1066 in uh, uh, oh we can create two titles ah because I've just accumulated enough gold um, yeah so you've got England you've got the the Welsh uh, duchies you've got the fragmented Ireland and Scotland looking rather the, the map was a bit abstracted in this I mean look at Scotland's shape look at England's shape look at everywhere's shape it is a bit ridiculous but it was never meant to be an exact cartographic, uh, you know, representation. I think the first, uh, I think, yeah, it would have been the first two Europa Universalis games, or at least EU1 and EU2. There were a couple more that were kind of associated. Uh, was it Sphere Reich? And there was something else. Um, but the... Um, the map style was uh, a bit on the creative side, shall we say. So let's check our relations with England. How do I do that? Let's have a look. Uh, this is William de Normandy. And I could offer an alliance. I'm not sure what he thinks of me, to be honest. Oh, there we go. Our relation, plus 38. So it's not bad. I can't... Oh, the amount of, of stuff you had to keep in your head because there was no easy way of accessing it in the game. Yeah, I put so many hours into this game. It's... it's. I don't know how we did it, but we did it. And it spawned CK2. So, you know, good things came of this game. Also, it was a bit surreal going and installing a game from a disc. That's the first time in a, a little while that I've done that. So, um, shall we create... Uh, there was a way of... Uh, I really should have disabled Skype. I thought... I thought... By default, I tend to have Skype set so it doesn't bug me with pop-up messages. But uh, apparently it's taken to uh, setting itself to be available every time I log in whereas previously it was remembering the the previously set status so that's Skype doing something rather than me setting it back preemptively so how should this child be raised so 
if you remember in CK2, when you've got a child ready to be educated, you don't actually have to, but what you can do is you pack them off to a particular character, and there's various things that can happen. But that doesn't happen at all in this game. You uh, just get options. So you've got four options. You can get the parental upbringing trait, which can trigger various events for you. And if you do it yourself too many times, or well, for, for indicating the wrong person there, you get various events. I'll, it is pause, isn't it? Uh, you can have the nannies raise the child, in which case they get the trait selfish. You can raise, have them raised by monks, in which case they get modest. Or you can have them raised by local nobles, in which case they gain the trait trusting. Or else, you can send a fosterling. You can improve relations with another court by basically packing them off and letting the other ruler decide how to educate them. So, I'll click on that which does cost me a little bit and as you can see it has some uh, modifiers so my fertility has gone down by one well, there's a 20% chance that it, it has gone by, down by one I have no idea if it has or not and there's a 5% chance that my health has gone down by one as well so we could send Fosterling and that was uh, Duncan I believe and that will in theory improve relations with England unless the games just crashed. Did I mention that this game was particularly buggy? I one occasion one occasion tried to uh, play the multiplayer with a friend that also had this Yeah, I think the longest stint we managed was about four minutes before it crashed. So yes this game this game um, This has been yes Interesting. Um, I think I'm I'm glad that we got to the stage where we got CK2. I think I'm, you know, it's one of these ones where I look back at it fondly, but I couldn't go back and actually play it because CK2 has just invo uh, evolved so much that was in this game in such a good way. And also, it's not quite as horribly buggy and prone to crashing, although actually CK2 has had its periods where it's not been quite as stable as one would have wished. But uh, on the whole, yes, this was a good introduction to the series. But I'm not sure I could recommend going and buying it out of curiosity's sake because there's really nothing it does that CK2 doesn't do a hell of a lot better. Now all we need is for Paradox to get off their asses and make Victoria... Would it be Victoria 3 or Victoria 2? I can't remember. But we need another Victoria game, damn it. Because the first one was... Um, a bit too much on the dense side, shall we say. And also there's a whole bunch of stuff in that game that just also badly needs updating. But uh, anyway, so um, this was Crusader Kings. And this was really just a bit of a novelty vi uh, video. And it really crashed a lot quicker than I'd hoped it would have. But anyway, never mind. So if you played this back in the day, um, let me know in the comments section. If you uh, have anything else to say, you can say it there as well. Um, you can also hit the like button. You can subscribe to my channel, check out my CK2 videos, and as always, stay tuned for more.